first at the winning pool. Okay, well this year what we planned on doing is to have a livestock tent. So under this tent you'll actually find a combination of extension service in livestock, veterinary services and research and development. Where extension services are concerned, we are focusing on the value of goats that you can get from your goats. A lot of persons don't know about goats and that you can slaughter them and eat the meat, but we're trying to show that the milk can be valuable because the milk can be used to make soaps and lotions and also to make cheese, which we have tastings down here as well, as well as some of the samples of the soaps and lotions that the milk can be used to make. We also have um, the, the skin that can be used to make craft products. You'll see slippers and purses and bells that the goat skin can be used to make. Also, we're talking about the grades of eggs and the sizes of eggs. When you go in the supermarket, if you look at the, the, the trays that your eggs come in, you'll see it says grade A, large eggs. Or it can say grade A, medium sized eggs. So we're showing persons that there are various sized eggs. You can start from the peewee to the small to the medium, extra large, all the way to jumbo. The grade of the okay, the grade of the egg matters because it depends on the quality of your eggs. When you get a grade A egg, the, the shape of the egg is supposed to be perfect, a perfect oval shape. It's supposed to be free from any shell de, um, defects, so you wouldn't see cracks in it. You wouldn't see sometimes the, the shells feeling rough. It's supposed to be feeling smooth, and you know the general look of the egg. Sometimes they do they go through what they call a candling process, where a light is actually shone through the egg and then you can see even the position of the yolk and the size of the ear cell. We have a chart that shows all of that. Okay, well, first of all, let me speak about the combination of all of us. I think it's for livestock, it's a good idea because sometimes when persons come to Denby, they have an issue with animals. It might be something that is like husbandry practices related where extension could assist them with that. Sometimes it's actually something medical where you really need a vet. And then you have research that can help them to deal with different forages and stuff that they can use to feed their animals. Now what happens sometimes if when you come to Rada and they will get that information, they have to walk and go and find where veterinary services are. Sometimes in the walk, you know, you go different places and you might not even end up at some of these places. So to have everybody where livestock is concerned under the one umbrella, when you come you get everything to deal with animals. This unification with Rada and Ministry is not the first. What is different, especially for livestock, is that we have all the livestock related persons under one tent joined before but we would have had individual tents that persons have to walk and go and visit but with this year for livestock I don't know for anybody else but I know for livestock all the livestock information you want or need you can find it in one general area which is good. Working with Rada in 2007 and so from 2007 until this year we have been working no we have been working together but the last two years the two previous years we had separate uh, mounting of displays which was also good too. Farming is a really good thing. Without farming, we can't eat, right? Um, Ministry of Agriculture and the RADA team has put on Dembe, and I really feel that Dembe is a good thing for the nation. It raises awareness of um, various products, um, livestock, and farming methods. And um, yes, I am. Um, the, the youth nowadays, really, the as you said, they go more for glamour. So, in most cases, they look down at farming and farmers, but they don't understand that if the farmer doesn't get up and decide to farm, there'll be no food, really. Uh, separate and apart from the, the genetically modified foods that, that they send down from America and the UK and wherever, you know, our products are really the real products. And I think youth, youth in general should get involved in farming because if you go to the countryside, wherever you go, you realize that most of the farmers, they are up in age. Really, my father is a farmer, right? And really and truly, youth should get involved in farming. It's a, all right, um, I 
Real and truly they are not aware. Bottom line, they're not aware. And the schools really have nothing to do with it because um, that's the perception they get, the youth get growing up, that they should become doctors, lawyers. Um, and they don't know that there are careers affiliated with farming that ne don't necessarily have to do with the dirt and the, the plowing, you know what I mean? And as I said, it has nothing to do with the school, it just has to, it starts with the home, right? Um, if a youth says he wants to be a farmer or, you know, his parents will probably say, no, are you crazy? And there are real business opportunities within farming that there's just not enough awareness about and that is why Dembi is here. So I really appreciate this setting. Yeah. So what did this what, what did this mean today? Yes. Um well Firstly, let me congratulate all the individuals who are working so hard in the field of agriculture. You know that that is our foundation uh, industry, if I might call that so. And we're very proud of the achievements of the of the Jamaica Agricultural Society and agriculture as a whole for the past 60 years, I think. The JAS has been conducting their annual Denby show and it seemed to me that every year they have grown better and better, attracting more and more people and just influencing individuals and getting them to be aware of the importance of, of agriculture, growing what we need to eat and for our sustenance and development. And I just want to encourage our young people to get more involved in agriculture because it is the way forward. I saw earlier a ladder, an agricultural ladder, and at the top of the ladder are the dollars, which means that when you climb the agricultural step, you're, empowered. you're financially empowered. You are financially empowered, harvesting your wealth. And so I just want to compliment the, the individuals who have worked so hard on that and congratulate the Ministry of Agriculture for the wonderful work they are doing and the awareness that the people are having in terms of uh, agriculture. Only hope that we'll be able to combat the challenges in the industry, primarily predial larceny, so that the folk who work so hard can get the benefits of their labor. Demonstration by the livestock specialist. Her name is Maxine Brown. Can you give her a round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen? And I have to tell you, but as a condition of entering, even though it's free, this is a must. You have to watch because some of the questions are coming out of here. Maxine, over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. I notice that you will see, you will notice, you will see some nice leather craft products. There are some on display here and some in the booth behind me. And what we want you to do is to so he can clearly explain to you the process. And maybe one day some of you will go in that area of production to start a small business for yourselves. Also, we will be showing how you move from the leather to cutting out the different products like your leather belts, your slippers and that kind of thing. So it is very interesting to watch and to learn. Okay, Mr. Longmore, over to you. You can just explain first of all and then we can show them. All right, what we'll be doing here is to <clears throat> remove the hair from the skin and we use a, these are some of the chemicals we use. So we just want to show you that it's not hard. What we have is plastic soda mixed with um, white lime and that's what we use to remove the hair from the skin. And this is what it does. This is how it works. Yeah, 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 right. Remove the hair very easily right without the damaging the skin. And after we yeah, remove yeah, the hair, we yeah, do yeah, another, yeah, go to yeah, another stage, yeah, which is called a hair flesh. We remove the flesh from the skin, all of these um, fatty parts and stuff, and it's all done by hand. 
After we leave this stage, we put it in um, fresh water, we wash it, and then we move to the second stage where we the lime it, right? Where we remove the white lime from the skin in which we use the salt with um with um acid, the sulfuric acid. That's what we use to remove it. Now this is what it looks like. What it looks like. This year, from an ICT perspective, one of the things we wanted to have done was to ensure that you would have seen the transition of technology. The ICT Knowledge Center provides enough information for looking at information transition over the years. We're looking at how data was being collected in a manual form. Now we're looking towards moving it into ICT. So if you go into the ICT Knowledge Center, you would have seen the transition of data collection, you would have seen the transition of moving from a paper-based manual system more to information and communication technology. And we're looking primarily at using websites, we're looking at the internet, we're looking at ABIS as an agricultural business information system. It's an agricultural resource planning tool primarily developed for RADA and the Ministry of Agriculture to manage farmers. So, in, in other words, we're also extending the education, not just from an ICT perspective. We, are, we have also contributed to developing what we say is an edutainment facility, which is a wheel of fortune, moving agricultural information into a fun prize-giving situation where patrons would actually learn something about agriculture. Eventually, all of what we're going to culminate into an online questionnaire where patrons who come to the site, come to the location, will get the opportunity to respond as to whether or not they were satisfied, their information needs were satisfied by what we presented at Denby this year. Put it this way, Denby for me over the years, it has not always been on the first two days that you would have seen the mass of people. The mass of the people usually come on the very last day and this year I am quite certain, I am very enthusiastic because I believe tomorrow being Independence Day, the turnout will be far more than what it has been over the last two days. So I'm looking forward to seeing more people coming to learn about agriculture, the entire business itself. Many people are here today, but I know come tomorrow we'll see far more than what is here. Who's I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing in front of you, I'm sorry. <laughs> it almost went there, you see? Oh, the devil wicked. All right. Well, too bad. I'm sorry, Kimisha. So, history. All right. These questions too easy. Yes. Which parish is known as the breadbasket parish of the nation? St. Elizabeth? Copper people, yay! <laughs> I don't have all my prizes out over there, and I need my prize master, Mr. Cross, to just run quick. What do you want? Livestock, vegetable? Anything? Anything except oops. <laughs> oops, I did it again. I said the Oh, thank you. Enjoy. Same question, I want. I'm going to my head. Well, come, come, miss. Spin and win. Spin and win. Come, spin and win. All right, what's your name? Alicia. Alicia? Uh, which area of agriculture you think you know something about before you spin? Which one of them? 
Baby animal. Baby animal. So that would be livestock. All right, take a spin, my girl, and see what happens. Nobody never gets it right. The Denbe Agricultural Show celebrates how many years of existence in this year? 58. No, I'm sorry, you were no, you're off. But um, thanks for trying, though, yeah? You can, you can come and spin. This lady had her hand up first. Come on.